Dr. David Bradshaw is professor of philosophy at the University of Kentucky. In addition to his many scholarly articles, he's probably best known for his book, Aristotle East and West, Metaphysics and the Division of Christendom, published by Cambridge University Press. I was grateful for the opportunity to spend some time recently with Dr. Bradshaw and for his willingness to sit down for this interview. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with Dr. David Bradshaw. Okay, so the Divine Liturgy is Mystical Experience, um, that was a paper I gave at a conference on mysticism in Moscow. And since we're in Russia, I, you know, I wanted to talk about something orthodox. And um, I wanted to correct what I think is a misconception about mysticism itself that exists in the West. Uh, uh, the misconception being that mysticism is, uh, mystical experience is primarily something private and esoteric. Um, uh, if you read classic authors who have written about this, like say William James in his book The Varieties of Religious Experience, that's something that he takes for granted. And he does so because it was the way that people had been thinking about that word or that concept for centuries already at the time that he wrote. And if you look at the history of it, um, that that's a definition of what the mystical is that was already there in the late Middle Ages, where mystical theology was contrasted to uh, biblical theology and to positive theology uh, as precisely that which is personal and can only be uh, experienced and not fully described, and uh, you know has to be pursued sort of to some degree in isolation. Um, and you have great mystics like, uh, say, uh, St. Teresa of Avila and uh, St. Uh, uh, John of the Cross, who were great models of that. Well, the Greek word uh, mystikos um, and doesn't mean that at all. It means that which is initiatory. Okay, And it was a word used in the ancient mystery religions uh, for their rites of initiation into some mystery about the divine that was only revealed after a process of purification and preparation as sort of a, uh, a climactic moment. And uh, then it was to remain secret. Uh, so the word mysticos actually comes from the verb muain, which is to shut, to shut your eyes, because your eyes were shut as you were led up to this great climactic moment. And then also your lips were to remain shut afterward, uh, because what you had been initiated into was not to be revealed to the uninitiated. Well, the church fathers uh, used that term quite broadly for the Christian rites of initiation, particularly baptism and the Eucharist. Uh, they were referred to as mysticos, uh, mysticos rites. And we still use that term in, in the orthodoxy for um, the Lord's Supper or the uh, the Last Supper, uh, it's uh, homistikos deepnos, the, the mystical supper. If you look at the icons, as you know, in Greek, that's how they're entitled. So um, how did it get? This is a little similar to the question about energia. How did the word mystikos come from what it originally meant to what it means today? Well, the short answer is that um, it was included in the title of the short treatise by Dionysus the Areopagite. Uh, the mystical theology. Um, but what happened in the West that didn't happen in the East was that that treatise of, by Dionysius tended to be read in isolation from the rest of his writings, the divine names, the celestial hierarchy, the ecclesiastical hierarchy, which are much broader and more, um, how should I put it, They're, the mystical the uh, excuse me, the um, the celestial hierarchy and the, and the ecclesiastical hierarchy are about liturgical practices and life in the church. And among other things, how that is, is, is all an image, what we do in the church is an image of uh, what the angels are doing perpetually around the throne of God. But they're about 
corporate acts of worship. And so for Dionysius, that little short treatise, The Mystical Theology, is describing, ultimately, it's sort of giving a particular perspective on what can only be experienced in and through the corporate worship of the church. Uh, and if you read that treatise apart from its larger context in the Dionysian corpus, you'll miss that. So um, that is what happened uh, in the way the Dionysius cor Dionysian corpus was sort of uh, absorbed into Western thought in the Middle Ages. And that, that's what then led the word mystikos to take on this distinctive connotation of that which is private and personal uh, that it never had in the East. Uh, so in the East, the paradigmatic form of mystical experience is the divine liturgy because it's in the liturgy that we are initiated and enter into uh, that fellowship of the angels that exists eternally around the throne of God. The liturgy is a form of initiation. And of course the Eucharist is uh, sort of the culmination of that in which we uh, share in the body and blood of Christ and are come to, to participate in his very life. Um, so, so for the East, the mystical means that which initiates and, and enables one to enter into the divine life. Uh, and so I wrote the article to defend uh, the claim that the liturgy is itself mystical in the fundamental and, and most uh, important sense of the word. Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Dr. David Bradshaw. Please subscribe to get notified when new episodes become available. And if you do enjoy the content on this channel, please consider supporting the channel. There's a link to the support page on our website below this video. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.